Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, first of all, to the Basque government for inviting me to be here and for giving me the opportunity of uh, speaking to you all. And listening to Jorge Arevalo's words, I remember what the uh, um, regional minister uh, and I talked about uh, uh, when we, he first uh, asked me to um, be part of this uh, conference, and I said, I have no idea about vocational training, because here you're all the experts, but as the um, um, regional minister uh, never accepts your first uh, uh, answer, and he insists, because I know him well from when he was the mayor of Tolosa, and uh, little by little he was able to uh, convince uh, the companies to go to Tolosa because he had prepared an infrastructure for them. I said, well, I don't know if I should speak. And he said, well, you should speak about your experience. But um, that really caught me because I have uh, more than 40 years experience in the same company, a Basque a company from Guipuzcoa, from the El Goyerri area, which is uh, not the same as any other uh, area and that's what I will do what I will try to share today my experience with vocational training in this company and let me uh, uh, tell you we are with the uh, government in our, our heart but we work with uh, uh, many others uh, too because as you will see we have had a very long and lasting relationship uh, moreover, I am convinced that I'm not going to say that because I'm in a vocational training, uh, uh, that thanks to vocational training, but I would say that without vocational training, it would be impossible to uh, be where we are now. The uh, reality of the industry that we have in different countries, and we have the representatives of these uh, countries here, would not be able to progress because the reality of the uh, raw material that comes from the colleges is that sometimes we don't have those colleges, we don't have that training. And uh, manufacturing is a training is not that complex, but uh, you need to know how to uh, um, read the plan, weld, machine parts, and uh, other stuff. Uh, you cannot come from um, serving hamburgers to uh, doing this. There is an intermediate stage. And when this is done, then we obtain this reality. And that's what I'm going to try and explain through my experience. And mainly uh, to express what we see from the uh, private uh, sector and what we demand to vocational training. Because I must acknowledge that with the videos that uh, Jorge uh, showed us, I feel um, quite uh, well. It is true, if you do what you've said you're going to be doing, then you're on the right track to what we are demanding and what we will be needing in the private sector. Let's see if I can get this to work. So uh, first I will start with advertising. I think I won't be selling any uh, buses or trains here today, but let me at least speak a bit about the, our company. We are a company working on railway rolling stock, uh, which is uh, trains. Recently, we are working also on urban buses, and we've given step forward to everything that has to do with the most advanced signage uh, train systems, comprehensive systems, and so on and so forth. These are our figures. We've been working for more than 100 years. So we started at the end of the 19th century. 1860-something in a, a plant that manufactured uh, trains and before CAF uh, existed in 1917, so more than 100 years with 13,000 employees present in more than 50 countries. We've developed more than 200 railway projects in the five continents. There's two 
100,000 new buses that have been already delivered and our turnover would be around 3,000 million euros. Obviously, all this experience and some of the aspects have been key to us, and that is technology development and internationalization and development. I believe these have been the two main uh, uh, pillars uh, for us. Always trying to be competitive uh, as all other companies because uh, we compete with bigger companies because you might believe 13,000 is a lot of employees but our main competitor has 80,000. So as I was saying, this is what we want to uh, focus on and continue doing. We could say that we are in a good position. If there is a consensus nowadays in Western society, that is that everything having to do with uh, decarbonization and the uh, fight against uh, the problems of uh, pollution and climate change are a key element. In the European Reconstruction Plan and in the European Green Deal, we always find this idea. And in fact, mobility is one of those elements that uh, causes this uh, pollution. Therefore, we're lucky enough to be in an environment in which the future um, will allow us to grow. Let me give you some figures for where away rolling stock will continue growing. It will continue growing at a 2% at least every year. But if we look into buses, 45% of the new urban buses have to be clean buses, and that's by 2025 and more than 65% by 2030. When EU talks about clean buses, we're not talking about hybrid. We're talking 100% electric or hydrogen buses that are non-polluting. So this is a whole new world uh, for us. And in Spain, with the areas of uh, low emissions, and I would encourage you to even create a zero emissions area because that's the way of convincing uh, uh, citizens. I always say if a mayor that uh, puts in place drastic measures with non-polluting public transport after the political discuss discussions, because people can say, yes, you can, I want to drive my car. Okay, you can do that, but you have to pay taxes for it. So I believe this. Uh, a lot of space to, to uh, grow, but I come here to talk about uh, CAF, our company, and its relationship with vocational training, and there are a couple milestones that are very important. In 1917, when uh, the company was officially created with this name, CAF had the uh, need to find uh, skilled uh, workers of the time. And we had a, a trainee uh, school. In 1917, we already had this uh, kind of uh, a trainee school, which became our own uh, college. In a company of our size, we had our supermarket, housing, churches, schools, and a training college. And uh, in the year 1960, in Franco's times, we were a a college uh, that provided uh, different uh, qualifications. And in 1963 is when in the uh, Goyerri area, the uh, vocational training college is created. And CAF contributes with its school, and the school becomes part of the El Goyerri College. So as I was saying, our heart is in the Goyerri School because it celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2013 and we continue collaborating. Here on the next uh, picture, uh, that's uh, to compare with those uh, videos of the future that Jorge showed us, 
Here we have the um, teacher uh, complying with uh, safety and health uh, measures, and these were the young people that were uh, being trained at the time. And they were uh, fitters, lathe operators, mill operators, uh, boiler makers, and so on and so forth. If we go to the specific data of the 13,000 people in our organization, 18,840 have a, mm, vocational training. And if we focus on the Basque country, it's 3,040 of them, mainly in El Goyerri, but also in Idun and other areas. 3,040 people, which is uh, two per every engineer, because there's around 1,400 engineers in the um, company in the Basque country. And for each uh, engineer, we have uh, two um, people from vocational training. And mainly we have mechanics, uh, the electricians, the design, and uh, management, mainly the first three. And I do uh, recognize that there's an important gap that was present in newspapers yesterday, which is the role of women. It's really uh, small if we look at percentages. We're speaking about uh, 10, 15 percent, even though at one point the college, the um, unions and ourselves have publicly invited women to incorporate uh, to our company because they have uh, uh, wages and working conditions that are much better than in other sectors. But still, we are not able to seem appealing to them. And I believe this is an element to reflect on, because right now we need more people, and that only a 15% of uh, women decide to work on these uh, professions of the future is a very big uh, gap that we should uh, be able to do something about. For us, vocational training is not only to have uh, young people that uh, come to work with us. We want to have a relationship, and in fact, we have one, it with the college in El Goyerri and others. And we have a relationship, but there's also ongoing training initiatives and we want to collaborate with the uh, colleges. We want them to participate so that our training programs are shared and known by them. We also want a reskilling or retraining programs. It is true that manufacturing is not so important, but design is uh, more important now. And we are retaining people that started in the workshop and that later on go to design. And we need to count with the collaboration of the colleges for specific uh, training. We need to train them on, uh, uh, test them, uh, magnetic uh, particles, uh, non-destructive uh, tests, uh, and uh, others. Because our workers cannot be uh, focused only on training others. So that's why we need the collaboration of colleges. What's happened with our internationalization process and vocational training? When there was uh, no vocational training, then the uh, uh, plants uh, do not um, create a roots in the area. So in some places, it's being uh, us who have uh, had meetings with uh, town councils, unions, and uh, other politicians to find uh, formulas. Because this is something that we believe it's normal, but we don't find it everywhere. We don't have vocational training everywhere, and even in important countries. So this internationalization has been very useful because young people from the vocational training colleges have been able to uh, travel, and they spend a few uh, years maintaining uh, trains in the deserts of uh, Arabia or in the Norwegian fjords. And they stay there for a few years, and this encourages them to learn languages, English, and to live abroad. In my next slide, 
I taken this uh, from a document that you're preparing at the ministry, and I'm not going to go into it in detail. It's just a reflection on what are the needs of the future for vocational training, because this is an issue that needs to be analyzed, and uh, we need to um, put measures in place. In the Basque Country, vocational training has a adequate level. It needs to be improved. That's uh, obvious, and Jorge Arevalo said so. But it is true that since the 80s, and when the Basque government is created, there is a clear idea and that the industrial policy is significant, and it is significant as well as university, vocational training, and technology centers. They all work together. Vocational training with no industrial policy with uh, um, no, nothing else uh, would be um, not as important. And little by little, I'm destroying everything here on stage. I really don't know what I'm doing now. And what about the future? I believe uh, the videos explained it uh, really well. But as a, a company, and like all companies, we're in a mm, process of transition, sustainability, connectivity, and digital transformation. Our manufacturing plants are digital, uh, warehouses to virtual reality is present in assembly processes. So we are already seeing this. For example, a specific case so that you see that that's real. The pandemic has allowed us to learn things that we didn't imagine we could uh, do. We've been able to validate the design of full trains for New Zealand with no one traveling to New Zealand or no one from New Zealand uh, coming over here by making use of all these technologies. Even more, we've been able to deliver trains in the UK before you had many inspectors uh, to um, checking everything, but they just said, do this test and this other test, and so on. So you can validate a design and deliver trains with a high complexity with no physical presence. So everything you progress in, uh, so that the youth are uh, familiar with this kind of uh, techniques and methods makes a uh, real sense. And uh, I would like to finish by speaking about the uh, challenges that we face, uh, reduce uh, lead time, improve efficiency, standardize uh, methods. But to do this, our levers are experts in automatization, collaborative robotics, digital uh, manufacturing, analytics, virtual reality, and everything that has to do with lean manufacturing. If you go to vocational training uh, colleges and this is what you're focusing on, then this is what the industry is demanding uh, too. And to finish, we are working together with other 32 other relevant organizations in the railway um, uh, field in a uh, program uh, called Staffer. This program tries to identify the training gaps in the sector, both in the engineering area, but also in the vocational training area. And we're part of this uh, program to see what are the strategies that we can develop. We will uh, give this information to the government, but all the results, all the outcomes will be shared with you because there's something that is clear. In the meeting that the president of uh, companies uh, have, the uh, European group of uh, railway manufacturers, uh, one of the big concerns is the fight for talent. Being able to attract these young people, because for many, young people in Europe, the train is something of the 19th century. It's not appealing enough compared to other things. So we need to fight to get the best uh, professionals. Uh, but to do this, we also need to 
identify and be aware of uh, the skills that are needed, the know-how that is needed, and what is the gap between what exists and what we need. This is what we wanted to share with you. This is the non-ending uh, dynamic of uh, a relationship between a company with uh, um, BT centers, technology centers, and universities, creating an ecosystem in which the industry has a relevant role. In fact, the pandemic has um, shown us that uh, People, for example, Macron visited our factory in France saying that it wouldn't be possible that we didn't have chips, uh, masks, and that uh, countries have, are, mm, have to refocus on this industrialization uh, process. And it's not exactly that I agree with uh, what Macron was saying at the time, but the same thing is happening with the uh, Brexit in UK. It's providing new opportunities, too. And I am an optimist because I believe that um, confronting the pressure of the Chinese, the U.S. has started to work, and it seems that uh, Europe, uh, too, because if not, we will end up bringing everything from China. And one day we won't have vaccines, other days we don't want to have tips and then we won't have raw materials like aluminium, and then we will have absolutely uh, nothing. So we have to fight against this. We have to focus on the industry, and vocational training is a key element. Um, 80,000 people of 13,000 are uh, come from vocational training, so we are very aware of this in our company. Thank you.